Comedy Store for a brand new episode of Kill Tony Volume 2. Give it up for Tony Hinchcliffe. Fuck yeah, half empty belly room tonight. Yeah. Wow, not sold out for the first time in a long time. This is exciting. Hi, live audience, those of you that are here. There's proof for you listeners on Ustream right now that it's a half-filled crowd. Now yeah. you believe us. Uh, shout out to our listeners on Ustream backslash, Ustream.tv backslash Death Squad, everybody. The thousands of people watching live and the tens and tens of people that made it out tonight. I think it's because we confused them. Because the uh, 100th yeah. episode was in the main room on a different night, wasn't yeah. it? Or, and yeah. then we, we were... took last week off. We were in Vancouver. We sold yeah. out a theater in Vancouver. Yeah, Me and Brian awesome. doing yeah. stand-up comedy. How about that, <laughs> motherfuckers? Two years in a row, we sold out a theater in Vancouver. And then we had a lot of fun. We went on after the show, and we just both talked to the audience, did a little yeah. Q&A sesh. That, yeah. was, that was more fun than the, the actual show, I thought. Yeah, we're pretty... We, who would have guessed after 101 episodes? Oh, my God. Laney and Jerry, are you kidding me? You guys have been to almost every show, and still, you keep your phones on, you talk, you order drinks louder than anybody... It's unfucking believable you two. You're like cartoon characters of of bad audience members. And you're like the regulars. You come to every episode. Shut up. Yeah, there you go. There's a sound effect I think that was fitting. Uh Well, welcome guys. Please turn your ringers off. Is Jerry sleeping right now? Is that what I'm seeing? Oh, he's looking down at his phone. Oh, thanks. So both of you, okay, you guys are great. You guys are great. So so two of the 17 audience members are not even really enjoying the show so far. They're pretty. They, they're pretty much just waiting for their phones to go off. Yeah, and they're, I like how they brought an old ro rotary, 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 <laughs> rotary phone. <laughs> a rotary phone. <laughs> I can't even the say phone, it anymore. A phone that went out of style so long ago that you can't even say the word. Rotary. Wow. Rot rotisserie? No. Ro 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 rotary. rotary. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We all know what it is. It's not <laughs> somebody got it right. We all know the word. You're just pretending to not know what it was. What are you walking my about? My mom does that. What? How, how did I almost forget? Pat Reagan's here, everybody. You heard his music. We love him. He's amazing. Hi, Pat. Hey. How'd you have fun at episode 100? You got to meet the old co-host, the old know. side guy, the actual Iron Patriot. He's got a foot fetish. Yeah, he does. He's a weird guy. <laughs> That's why we replaced him with you. Very good banter. Yeah. Uh, very good, Pat Reagan. Yeah. Pat and I are known for our uh, electric chemistry, uh, which is actually true. <laughs> but uh, right there, little little accident. Uh, but hey, I guess that happens. I guess every once in a while, you know, they can't all be home runs. And that wasn't even close to a home run. That was that was pretty bad. That was a pause on a podcast and a live show. Well. You know, now I Strike three. Oh, there you have that sound effect? That's amazing. Okay, that's enough. Uh, so, guys, <laughs> uh, also May 12th, we're in uh, San Francisco, and May 13th, we're in Sacramento. Yeah, Punchline. Yeah, come see me and Brian again at Punchline and Cobbs. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Let's get into it, guys. This is, uh, this is uh, over episode 100 of Kill Tony. Some have told me that it's episode 101. Some have told me that it's episode 102. I've lost count. The producers of the show have lost count. And uh, so here we are. Welcome to episode Who Gives a Fuck of Kill Tony. Yeah. <laughs> Volume whatever. Yeah, exactly. Our one and only sponsor makes us a delicious meal every single week. It's the chef of all comedian chefs, the one and only Elise Lane, ladies and gentlemen. Just quit her job as an executive chef at a restaurant because her new full-time job, being Russell Peters' full-time chef, is now enough to pay her motherfucking bills. Now, you might be wondering, how does, how does uh, someone like Elise Lane get to work a full-time job with the richest, one of the richest touring comedians in the world? The answer is, he found her here on Kill Tony. And uh, so that's how the magic happens. Kill Tony, not only starting comedy careers but jump-starting chef careers as well. Uh, every single week, I two of my, oh, yeah, follow Elise Lane, at Elise Lane, and at the girl with the pan. She's Elise Lane, E-L-Y-S-E-L-A-I-N. You guys ready for Kill Tony episode Who Gives a Fuck or What? <clears throat> guys, it's gonna be so much fun. As always, I have two of my funniest friends in the world here tonight uh, to, uh, to sit here and watch comedians with me. Never an exception to that rule. This week, I'm really excited. I booked it perfectly. Two of my favorites. Put your hands together for Vanessa Ramos and Kirk Fox, ladies and gentlemen.
here they come. Live and in the flesh. Vanessa Ramos is here. Have a seat. I'm going to move it a little that way. Oh, my God. I almost pulled it right out from under you. That would have been <laughs> terrible. No, slide over, Kirk. Get over here. You got those long legs, but we got a... There's a... There's a uh, our third guest... Uh, there might be a third guest at some point. Who knows what can happen? Part of the excitement of Kill Tony. Uh, Vanessa, this is your first time on the show. You and I work together as roast writers all the time. This is one of the best roast writers in the world. When you're wondering who writes those diabolical jokes, it's usually her or me. That's yeah. right. Little Someone self plug. Someone just filled with hate. Yeah, yeah. And you really are. Vanessa has a very interesting style. A lot of writers in the roast room throw out as many things as they can, and they all try, and they try, and they try, and they try. And then Vanessa just says something. And that's it. Makes it to the final script, and she's a fucking genius. Vanessa Ramos, ladies and gentlemen. First time on Kill Tony. Now, Kirk Fox. Good to see you, Tony. One of the best comedians in the world, one of my favorite I don't think people. So, but and, that's nice. But you. most importantly, definitely one of our favorite Kill Tony guests. A super, super, super great guest. You always keep it very honest and very helpful to these comedians. Not tonight, but thank you so much. You're going to tell some lies tonight? Yeah, a little. Just with, with confidence. They won't know their lies until they try it outside of here and fail. Uh, every single week, I always have the co-host ask the guest a question that he wants to know. Rising comedian Pat Reagan, what do you got for Kirk Fox? Hey, Kirk. Hey, what, man? Hey, man. What, if you had uh, any advice to the comedians that are going to go up tonight before they go up, what would you say? Uh, well, stay hydrated is important. I will also say we don't know that your joke sucks unless you tell us. So if something doesn't work, don't tip the hat that it hasn't worked because maybe the tag's right around the corner. Believe in what you're selling. Boom. That should Powerful. Be, that should be enough. Yeah. Powerful. Thank you, Tony. Uh, Pat, what's your question for Vanessa Ramos? Uh, Keep in mind, I'm way less of an inspirational person. Like that was <laughs> fucking great, but I. Um, yeah, but I peaked. You have, you you have plenty of time. Oh, look at you. I'm you done. So, okay, Vanessa, Pat, what's a time when you've been mean to someone and gone like too far? Ah. Uh, well, it was a friend of a friend, and um, we were at. Oh, I'm gonna regret saying this. I feel like. Um, we were at IHOP, and he's a larger Jewish man, and um, it, it was like, they were both kind of fat, and they were just tearing apart the food in front golems. of us, and I, yeah, and so I said, I was like, yeah, watching you eat is like the breakfast holocaust, except this actually happened, um, <laughs> and I think like, him and I weren't buds like that yet, um, but he was still real fat in my defense, so. uh, That's not that mean. Well, yeah, I didn't think it was that mean, but, like, he didn't take it well is my issue. It's like, yeah, I don't think that's crossing a line, but, you know, he hasn't faced some hard truths, I guess. It is an interesting one. I know I deal with it a lot because I, you know, I like to, I like to hit people with stuff verbally when something's a little bit off. And I know they don't expect it from me, usually. If they don't know who I am or what I do, then they definitely don't know. But I'd imagine it must be like a thousand times worse for you because nobody would probably guess that you're literally like the most evil roast writer out of everybody. You seem so innocent, right? It's a big mystery. Do I seem innocent? I don't, I've never had a first, see, thank no? you. There's All never right. been like a first impression of myself, so I can't really gauge if, yeah, I guess I mean, you're I right. Just yeah, about, there's no first about, impression of you? Well, no, I'm just saying, saying of like, I can't I, gauge, I, I, just, like, I feel I just like I've always you, kind of been a I dick. just met you tonight. Okay. And... You scare the fuck out of me. Oh, <laughs> you guys, this is the best first time on ever. <laughs> Pat, thank you. Pat Reagan, everybody. Let's do this, guys. Let's get into it, shall we? Welcome, welcome. Comedians, you know the deal. Over 30 or 40 comedians signed up for the chance. In this bucket, their names exist for the chance to do 60 seconds of stage time in front of us and then talk to us live afterwards. Anything can happen. Comedians, you know your 60 seconds up. 60 seconds is up when you hear the sound of a kitty. Aw, ah! oh, that's adorable. Wrap it up then. They're all sure going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. Fuck, it's a little louder every week. <laughs> oh, that's obnoxious. Nice, Brian. It's just was a dick move. It's not funny. You're the only shot. one that laughs at it, and it makes no sense. It makes was no that sense. A was week that a after shot? week, I've talked to you about it off stage. You still don't change it. It's like a weird power thing with you for some reason. It's one of your so things. If, if so it's the like bear, I'm standing. If the bear like, doesn't do it. He shoots 
Was that a gun? Don't validate it, Kirk. Don't try to make. I'm, I got to get him to stop doing the no, gunshot. I just wondered thing. what it was. I, if I hear a gunshot, I want to know if it's real or not. I'm sorry to the listeners, these people with their headphones on that complain every fucking week about Brian's antics. Um, so let's do it. I already pulled the name out of the bucket. Your first comedian doing 60 seconds tonight goes by the name of Raphael Lechuga. <laughs> Here he is, Raphael Lechuga. Uh, so I spent a lot of time watching Live Leak videos. Uh, they're a lot like World Star videos, except uh, instead of black people, it's just death. And it's pretty sad because, well, here, here's some advice. If you don't want to know how much your entrails look like ragu, stay out of Brazil. Um, a little advice I have for all Brazilians, as a matter of fact. Eat nothing but ragu. That way people would just think, oh, you're pretty much dead at that point. Another ah, son of a bitch. Well, what did I write? Spent a lot of time on rapgenius.com as well. That's a sight to see. You can just come to my room, watch me be like, I took it for sushi she wanted to fuck, so I took it to Goat, so don't, don't even play it. I never had talked so much after I blew up. Just tell me hello or happy belated. And I think I texted, I told her I made it, and that's when I texted her, I told me she prayed it. And right after I texted her, I told her I love it. And right after I texted her, I told her I'm faded. Thank wow, you. fuck yeah. 60 seconds of uh, quiet thunder from Raphael Lechuga. Fuck yeah, Raphael. How you doing, man? What's up? Is this your first time on the show? Sick. Second time. Uh, did this go better than the first time? Yes. This went better than the first time? That was better than your last time on? I'm so. sorry, I'm sorry I it, missed the it, last one. I think, it was, I think we all missed the last one. Well, I think uh, he I think he was just feels good because he rapped, so he doesn't you know, he's just like, I just got that whole rap out. So Well the first time went better me. I mean the se the second time went better for me right now. Because first time I was just like First time went better the for the audience. Uh, no, yeah, I think actually it did go better for the audience. But actually right now I was a little more a little more a tad bit more confident today. You were more confident. But you didn't get the response that. Yeah. Because you got no laughs in 60 seconds. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's talk about it. You started with uh, you started with the death joke. What was that website that you said? Uh, Live leak. Right. So live leak, and, th and there was really there was really not much there. You just started talking. The one part where I think you were expecting there to be yeah. laughs was when you said <laughs> everybody looks like ragu on the inside. But that's not really. There's really nothing to that. Because, yeah, everybody does look like ragu on the inside because it's red. Uh, Here's, I think, for me, where I kind of gave up on comedy with you. Was <laughs> when, no, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere with this. It's kind of when you hit, like, well, it's, pr it's pretty sad because, like, as soon as you say, like, it's pretty sad, and I'm not expecting this big, like, oh, here we go. Yeah. Like, mic drop on the bum out. I, that was the point where I forgot what I was going to say next. I was just going real fast and what I wrote yeah, down. No, that, yeah, no, that's understandable. I'm just saying, like, for me, that was the one. That sounded worse than I meant it to. I enjoyed you. I you did? I think you enjoyed that? Ways. I enjoyed He has a nice face. He's taking, like, you're smiling. Oh, thank you. Yeah, like, it's, you know. That's one of that the biggest like, compliments you can get in comedy is he has he a, nice a nice face. <laughs> you got a nice face. Well, no, he's not, like, standing up here being You got like, a nice oh, face, but once you started talking. You, you dicks have it figured out? Like, yeah. I'm trying to be supportive, Kurt. We all, we all are. Uh, you see, he does have a nice face. Uh, <laughs> when you came up, you started so quick yeah. that we were all taken off guard. Okay. You got to take one breath at least just to find your footing. It's okay. just five seconds. And it's better to do one joke a little slower and possibly work through it okay. than three as fast as you can. Because if you do one, there's a chance that will work because we'll listen to it we did we didn't hear shit mm -hmm. and also you can't <laughs> hold on to that mic stand okay and then play with it uh, you know let your hands just drop and just be uncomfortable but just dance in that holding on to the mic like it's cool not you hear me motherfucker <laughs> yes sir <laughs> that, that wreck i mean a lot of your jokes could work they're just not ready <laughs> to leave your house <laughs> right. You know, the ragu thing? That's great. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, I just started. I started on this show, I think. Really? Was something like a month or something. Wow. Like that. Yeah. So I think it was like three weeks ago. I think it was episode 96. Well, let me tell you something. It looks like you've been doing it two months. 
<laughs> well, that's good. Oh, thank you. I, that ragu joke, you said everyone looks like ragu inside, but then you said people should eat ragu, so it looks like you got ragu. Like, oh, because like, that made no I, sense at all. Yeah, I was going to say uh, my advice for Brazilians to eat ragu and then put on your best. Oh, you're not ready to give advice. I was going to say put on, put on your best mutilated Daniel Day Lewis in case. Yeah. Uh, and worry. then you went into that rap uh, app. No one, like, I had no idea what that app was, but you acted like we all knew. And they were like, so then you can go on this website and see me go blah, 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 blah. I'm like, what are you talking and, uh, about? Yeah, what, is, <laughs> what, is, what is the website? Oh, rapgenius.com? Yeah, nobody knows yeah. about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, what is it? Oh, it's just all the lyrics to rap songs. Then you can, That's it. You can click on them and then find out the definitions of what everything right. means. I don't know what right. that is, and yeah. I'm an actual rap genius. <laughs> <laughs> no, a lot of people don't know that you about slow Vanessa. slow it down, okay. man. Enjoy, enjoy the chance. There's no rush. You know, you can suck fast or slow. All right. <laughs> slow's, be you. slow's better. All right. Very slow? I'm yeah, because then you at least enjoy your time. All right. So uh, I'm looking over at uh, my man over there, Patty Reagan. It looks like the wheels are turning over there. What do you got for this guy, Pat? Raphael, <laughs> I don't want to be mean. Be mean. All right. I got a couple of things. First off, <laughs> you came out at the gate talking about how you like watching videos of people dying. That's like, the audience is going to be like, oh, he's a psychopath, which tr I, I face that okay. in my, in my. I think I can go for a psychopath um, kind of. Yeah, but you don't really time. want to. No? All right. No. no. You don't want to freak so, out the audience. You don't want to freak yeah. out the It's like literally you had like no opener. You're just like, you're just like, you're like, you guys know, you guys know <laughs> YouTube? Well, I watch extreme YouTube where people fucking die. It's always I'm better to close with death. Um, okay. Don't open with it. But, and then, uh, and then when you rapped, you literally didn't enunciate a single yeah, word. Yeah, I was tripping. Rap, yeah. and then your name is uh, Lechuga, which is lettuce, I believe. <laughs> and I just like to say, uh, let us try to forget this. Woo! Ah, <laughs> oh, look at that! Look at that! I just, I just, okay, <laughs> yeah, the old classic jungle bird. When uh, <laughs> you know what that sound means. Uh, but I actually just got word from the from the uh, internet that you died so hard on stage today they just uploaded your set to Live Leak. So <laughs> it's all just come full circle for you. There he goes, that's Raphael Achuga. Keep coming back, Raphael. Don't quit. You're shaking. Raphael, you're awesome. nervous. You're in the game because you're We're passionate. We're all in this together, Raphael. Exactly. I mean, you do have the name of the fourth-ranked Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, but you can be a winner, Raphael. You can do it. Follow him at Lechuga Meister, the perhaps the <laughs> longest Twitter handle I've ever seen in my entire life. It's the funniest part. Lechuga Meister. <laughs> you should have opened with that. <laughs> Open with your Twitter handle. <laughs> oh man, rap genius. We have so much fun. The fourteen of us. This is a good pack. It really move. is. <laughs> it really is. I'm excited about it. I pulled another name out of the bucket, guys. Put your hands together for Brent Duncan. <laughs> Here he comes from deep in the back. Guys, I uh, quit therapy recently. I'm not fixed. Uh, he was just making me really uncomfortable, the therapist. He kept on fist bumping me and saying classic every time I'd tell him something I was ashamed of. <laughs> He's like, no condom, classic. <laughs> like, Doc, I'm terrified here. He asked me to help him move once. And I was like, I don't want to help you move. And he apologized, but he like tagged it with, sorry, we both just know that you don't have anything else going on. <clears throat> he asked me to help him, uh, he asked me to videotape it too. And I thought it was weird at first, and then I was like, what kind of rock star am I that this guy needs to document my shit? But then I was freaked out that at one point he'd be on Catalina Island with his other buddies. And he's like, you guys want to see some crazy shit? He just whips out a box full of tapes to say narcissist on it. All right, that's it. Yeah. Fuck yeah. It all pretty much made sense until the end. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that you're aware, Brent, that uh, people don't actually put videos on tapes <laughs> anymore, right? A box of tapes? You'd... I know. Oh, real to real. No matter how funny what you would have had written on that box would be, it still wouldn't hit. But a box of tapes, that's interesting. It's like a throwback. I like that. Anyway, Brent, how you doing, man? How do you feel about that? Uh, I liked the beginning, and then I just got really nervous at the end and yeah. wasn't completing anything. What, what do you think made you nervous? You guys, this. 
mean, that's it. It's, now, the, f- the, the first joke worked, and you got that big laugh. Yeah. And it was right after that that you bailed out yeah. uh, on your next joke. I don't joke. think I'm used to getting laughs yet. So that's one thing you should start to accept the <laughs> yeah, fact I that I think that would as help. a comedian, you're going to want the laughs. And, it, and if they really fuck you up this bad, then, you know, <laughs> write more jokes like the last two. I mean, and you got to look at the positives. Rafael Lechuga doesn't know if he can roll with laughs or not because he didn't get any. So, remember Rafael, guys? That was two minutes ago, everybody. Uh, remember that? Is it too soon for the Rafael jokes? <laughs> I mean, my advice to you really is just to, to slow it down and breathe a little. you got, you got real funny stuff. Thanks. And yeah. I, I see you off stage, and then I see you on stage, and, and it's a big difference. You gotta just chill up there. Yeah, I say, and, and trust I, yourself. I say it all the time, and it's very important for comedians to know. Like, instead of you know, a lot of people, I feel like they try to do a minute and twenty seconds of material in a minute to try to kill as hard as they can. And what ends up happening is then nothing hits because you don't sound like an actual human being. I've always been a believer when people ask me, I say do fifty seconds and go for the kill and take your time, and that ends up filling out the minute. So. I probably should have given this advice out before your set tonight <laughs> uh, because it probably would have helped a little bit. But now it's too late. I'll and take it. And I'm using you. you as an example to make everybody else better here tonight. Perfect. <laughs> but always take in the room first. I mean, you didn't you didn't take in your environment at all. Uh, I think you got to just take it in. I think catch should, that first breath and then just go tell your stories. I think you should just give up in, on comedy. <laughs> wow, look at that from nowhere. I'm, I you, you, give, you give Brent Duncan that, but That's Raphael fine. Lechuga gets nothing, and you tell him to come. Look at that, that immediate <laughs> karma. Immediate no. karma is Brian. But, but don't, back because we've been telling Brian that for five oh. years. <laughs> right, he, was, he didn't even mean to say that. He just had a flashback to being told it so much. That he, just, he just says it out loud sometimes. He knows I'm kidding. No, I thought you were really funny, and I could tell like halfway through you, something happened, and you just kind of bailed on your own set. Yeah, it was physical. I mean, I don't care if so like, you're I, telling I could me, feel it. I was like, Brent, oh, you're I telling me that when you heard that laugh, it made you more nervous. See, most comedians, yeah. they get a laugh, and they start to get comfortable. Uh, this it, yeah, it, it really weird. might not be a profession for you if the laughs are, <laughs> if the laughs are comfortable. Maybe Brian was I'm right onto with something. I, 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 Pat Reagan's wheels are turning so hard right now. It's, it's, they're actually not turning that hard. <laughs> well, you're rubbing your chin like they are. What are you, a fucking comic book villain? No, you know, I mean, I'm just, I'm just wondering, what was the moment? There was like a, literally a moment where all of a sudden, because I'm this close to you, I could like, we could physically touch <laughs> and there was a moment where you started almost like shaking after, yeah. the, after the first joke and I was like I was because because you're likable and you're funny and you and, and you and you've got stuff um, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious on pinpointing what that moment was I, I actually don't know good question but I felt it I know what he's talking about and it, it was just like yeah, uncontrollable. Just it was anxiety of, just it's, just, like it's just a wave of anxiety and panic but you got to remember the, it's not the situation that causes anxiety. Mm-hmm. It's just how you deal with the situation. So th- this room has nothing to do with it. it it's just something oh, that, that you got to work through. You were talking about therapy, Brent. This yeah. is actually <laughs> this, this is a Kill Tony therapy episode. I like it. Yeah, very <laughs> therapy-centric. But you got to stay hydrated. Did you eat enough? <laughs> well, I did not. That's yeah. It. I was because actually... I, I used to have panic and anxiety, and it all came down to I wasn't eating enough before. <laughs> that way you have no excuses. So Tony, I was actually going to open up my notepad and go, oh, Friday, Ice House show. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to invite, because you did such, you were doing so good. I thought you were the next one. Oh, to, I see what yeah. you're saying. For everybody else in the room. Thank you, uh, almost. Brian Thank was well. saying that he was going to invite him to a show that he does every Friday, a big sold-out show at the Ice House. That we usually grab from this show. Right. You, know, right. But you should also know that you got through it, so there's, it's over. Perfect. Thank so you. So you got through it, and that you didn't completely melt down, and now you're having a conversation about it. Where, so, are, you, where are you from? I think, oh, yeah, yeah, go on. Oh, no, I was going to say, I love the idea of just fucking bro therapist, like right out of the gate, like classic. I was like, oh, great. Let's, I wanted to see the escalation of it and see like what the big payoff is of like just gradually how he gets douchier and just the kind of taking that, like, oh, he's supposed to help you, and he just fucks up your life in an epic way. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if like you've – thought about that arc and you kind of froze here or what the issue but i just i want you to know that's a great premise yeah I think you great. should absolutely you. keep yeah it definitely is is it true you really have a therapist 
Um, I actually, it, it was free, so I ended up leaving because I didn't want to start over. It was through USC. It was like a year of this guy, and I'm like, I'm telling this stranger my stories and my secrets. And then they wanted me to start over with and, this other woman. And he's a college student. Uh, he, they're actual doctors, but they move on in, like, stages where... But very you know, young doctors. And the videotaping was free. I mean, was true. I, was I, it in the back of a van? Yeah. <laughs> it's probably on the internet. Uh, but to keep going with him, he took, like, a few people... And then, but you had to videotape it so he could like go over it with his peers and stuff. To and make the sure. reason I ask is because I think which that your answer turns out to be part of the joke, which oh, is yeah. that you took free, yeah, <laughs> you know, therapy sessions and they videotaped them. It raises the stakes okay. and it makes it a whole different, truer. And what and you should also experience. know is you see how you're talking right now. Mm -hmm. That's how you should be delivering your comedy. Yeah. Great. Just like this. Do you always wear shirts like that on stage? What, what, what was the second joke? What was what was the second joke you were going to do when you just had that little meltdown? Uh, there was the fist bump, the one where he's calling me, asking him to help him move, and he's saying that uh, he said, "Sorry, we both just know." I didn't mean to offend you. We both just know that you don't have anything else going on. See, now I heard the words. He knows everything, you know. See, now I heard the words. Still not funny <laughs> enough. But but now we at least heard the words. Now we can judge yeah. the joke and not you. Brent, do you ever do you ever come once? Have you ever like come once and then come again, like right like right again? Like you're All like I'm ready to go again. Yeah. You seem like a virile man. I was just wondering. <laughs> I was just wondering so. about your your ability to come twice. It's well, possible, yes. First of all, great question, Pat. Stay uh, really, stay maybe, maybe he'll show you after the show. Let's get back to this shirt for a second. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna guess where you bought it, and if I'm right, say yes. Okay. Ready? Tell the truth. Ready? Okay. Cracker Barrel. Yes. <laughs> it's true. Yes. I nailed it. And Pat almost fell off his stool. That's our second near fall. The bookends tonight are tipping outward, and I like this. Red Band and Patty Reagan. Fading, fading to the back. I like. But this. good work. Be this guy. Be Thank this you. guy. Well, back to the shirt again. Um, okay. <laughs> you know, it's very wrinkled. Like, where do you, do you yeah, store it in a fanny it pack or something? Like, well, what do you do? You hang up your shirts? Sometimes. Do you have a steamer or I'm an iron lazy. or anything? I'm a little. I just threw it on. It was cold. Oh, we know you threw it on. Yeah. We know that it's on. <laughs> we know that it's on right now. The question is, is what happened to that shirt before you put it, was it on? It wrinkled in my car. It, it was. was. Well, what part of your car was it in? The back seat with other sweatshirts. With other sweatshirts, so you have a whole you have a whole mess of wrinkled shit. Pretty much. Nothing wrong with that. Well, I'll tell you this: if you take care of yourself, <laughs> you'll have more self value. And if you have some more self value and self worth, then you're gonna feel a little bit better you know what on stage. Here, Tony? Wait, what's that, Pat? You know what happened here, Tony? What are you looking at right now? Why are you staring <laughs> off in a nothing? Special nothingness? Olympics over there. <laughs> I love it. I love. You were you were, di you were digging for gold in this T-shirt. You kept going back to the T-shirt. It's, it's not a T-shirt, like, damn it! Like, this is like a worthy T-shirt. Like, oh man, the material you can get from this regular button-up. It's shirt. not a regular button-up shirt. It's ugly. <laughs> it's ugly. Why do you think it's so ugly? I don't think it's a bad shirt. Look okay, uh, ugly. Round of applause. Ugly? What about a regular shirt? Round of applause. Who's applauding oh, fuck for you ugly? guys. Sorry you all dress ugly. You're a bunch of bad fucking dressers then. Give it up for yourselves. Pat. Put your ugly dressed hands fucking together. You ugly motherfuckers. Turn on me. And it's not a fucking t-shirt, man. That's not a t-shirt. You keep. I never called it a t-shirt. It's a fucking ugly regular shirt. Vanessa Ramos. It's not ugly. It's just underwhelming, I think, is what he's trying to say. I got to tell you, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta tell you, man. Looks comfortable. Looks like good cotton. Fuck it. You yeah. wear what you want. Kirk, I, Kirk I, only says that because he likes to be the best dressed man in the room. No. And he doesn't want you coming back I next week. I just like that he's working through some neuroses. I, I tell you what, I would rather wear that shirt than whatever this pink little Neapolitan ice cream <laughs> shirt is that you have on. What is that? Not, <laughs> first of all, that's not pink. That's purple. All right. Well, you can't, you can't that, that, punch down that, a shirt color. That's more normal than that. Though. Is that Neapolitan? Yeah. Oh, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> it. That is it. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. You backstabbing bastards. Look what you did, Pat Reagan. What are you looking at now? <laughs> Brent, I had a lot of fun with you. Congratulations. Thank you guys so much. Brent Duncan. My pleasure. Thank you guys. He's on Twitter at Brent3D. That's an easy Twitter handle. Follow him on Twitter.
Give him some tags to that wacky psychiatrist joke. Seriously, tell the truth. It'll be funnier. Free, free therapy. I mean, the level of life that you have to be at to even take it, and the, 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 it just can't be the best service. I mean, what is free that's actually better? You know? Nothing. It's dog shit. Free sex is always better. Than Way better. Free yeah, sex. yeah. Not in the long run. That's exactly what I'd expect a guy who's dressed like you to say. <laughs> How am I dressed? Well, no, just like free sex is always better with your fucking shirt and your hat that's somehow not fitting your head. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Dude, we don't. We have. We're not even gonna get into the climbing <laughs> clip full of keys. We're not gonna even go there yet. Oh my god! Oh, look at those wheels turning over there. Now he's looking at himself in the mirror. Wow! <laughs> you know he's excited when he's doing that. Really asking himself the tough questions like, how many times does he come in a row? <laughs> uh, guys, I pulled another name out of the bucket. It goes by the name of Cody Metzger. Here we go. <laughs> Not here. Oh, well, then oh, make shit. some noises, Pat, because that means he just got blacklisted. That's what happens when you get blacklisted. Uh, he makes a random noise. That That's... sound looked just like your T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly was. Pull another name out of this wacky bucket, everybody. Anything can happen. How about Eddie Whitehead Jr.? <laughs> Hello. Hello. I may look like Samuel Jackson. <laughs> I may sound like Samuel Jackson. But Samuel Jackson is the only black man in the United States who can walk up somebody on the street, say, what's in your wallet, and not go to jail. <laughs> I don't like playing the character. I don't like people who approach me. I'm poor. He's rich. Sometimes I'm doing poor man shopping at the grocery store. People are running over there. Mr. Samuel Jackson, can we have your... I said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I just came in here to shoplift. Please leave me alone. <laughs> Samuel Jackson. One night, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm in a bar. I'm, I'm playing a role. This guy comes over to me. He says, hey, Samuel. Blah. Throws up on my brand new Nikes. So I stay in character and I kill him. Ah. Uh, and I hope he burn in hell. <laughs> That's all I got. Fuck yeah, 57 seconds. Wow. First of all, can I just say, it is such, such an honor to have Samuel L. Jackson here tonight. Hell uh, yeah. Performing. Thank you, honey bunny. Um, <laughs> oh, I bet, you, I bet you could just riff Samuel L. stuff all day. I'm, I'm Eddie Whitehead Jr. right now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, how you doing, Tony? I'm great. A lot of people might not know. In fact, I'm pretty sure everybody uh, doesn't know you. So uh, <laughs> let me just you. tell you, Eddie was the first guy that I ever met here at the Comedy Store when I come, came to sign up for uh, the open mic. My and first you remember time. what you told me? I said, where do you want to be? Uh, I'm really afraid of what you're going to say, say live on the internet star. right now. You said, I want to be the best thing in comedy. And you're in your way. Well, uh, thanks, give Eddie. Give him a big hand. Thanks. I, I, that's very, way, that's very embarrassing, Eddie. Thank you for... Really throwing me under the bus there. I'm going to think uh, about that tonight when I'm laying next to the dumpster. Uh, <laughs> and Eddie's homeless. Yes. Uh, yeah, it turns out he I'm was urban here. camping, not homeless. Urban camping. Yeah, I could have went to Canada. And you play, he, what's interesting is he plays the harmonica at an intersection right around my neighborhood. Uh, Sam Vicente in Wilshire. He plays the harmonica. I He's one it. of those guys that uh, uh, crushes it at red thank lights. You, thank you, thank you, thank you. You make a lot of money doing that? Uh, I eat dinner. You eat dinner. I eat dinner. All right, and now I'm it's right. sad. Let's no, talk no, about no, your no, comedy. How long have you been homeless? Uh, I'm not homeless. I can go anywhere else in the United States and live comfortably, but not here. Y'all got some you crazy rent. You can go anywhere else in the United States, like someone without a home. Yeah. You can just pick up and leave your non-home. <laughs> <laughs> so true, Ed, true that, true that. Eddie, can I make a, make a suggestion? Yes. Now, if you started doing some jokes about being homeless, I got him. And about who you really, truly are, I got him. Well, and I can't do them in a minute. No, <laughs> you, I'm just telling you. Thank something. you, thank you. If you start doing a lot of jokes about that, soon you won't be homeless. I can, I can get that. Okay, got you it. know what I mean? Thanks, yeah. Because Good this tip. guy right here, that's soulful. This guy right here. 
you don't want to make a joke about being homeless. But, but if you start really attacking why you are and that you don't want to be, then you won't be. Because you're funny as fuck. You're smart. Fox, uh, are you, you I feel fox? like I'm in, yeah, I feel like I'm in therapy. I, I, I just no, started my period. But what I'm, what, That's good advice. That's good but, advice. But what I'm saying is, you know, <laughs> Sam Jackson, you can do all your Sam Jackson shit and yeah. big deal. What's what's the street meat? Like, what the, have you ever get any of those, like, road hookers? Like, is there any good ones? Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> Eddie. <laughs> but you see how uncomfortable it makes you? Yeah. That's yeah. the shit you need to be talking about because uh, it's hard. I got a thing where I get shot seven times to talk about that. The Great. bullets flying through my body. It's Good funny. For you. It's exactly. funny. Then make it but funny. no, no, no. But I need the homeless stuff. I don't have enough homeless stuff. I don't have anything homeless, really. You could be like, I look like Samuel Jackson if Samuel Jackson were homeless. Nah, it's too weird. Well, I, it, but... <laughs> let me step over here. Shut uh, up, white boy. <laughs> right. No, it's true. Good try, good try. Uh, <laughs> I think you really should talk more about being homeless. I completely agree with that. It's definitely real to you, and it's very compelling. And the fact that you don't do a, you don't, you don't talk about being homeless. I think you should. Uh, I think you should. Uh, because it's it, hard. No, 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 that is hard. See, I'm living from a different dynamic. Okay, I have houses that other women live in because I married them or something, you know. And I have things of value, but I can make it on this level with what I got. But that's the like shit. That's is. the shit we want to hear about. Okay, I can do that. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Like what, you, kinda... ju what you just said now, we were interested in. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, because yeah. I, I see you it know, in your eyes. I made a note a long time ago in my notebook. If it makes me cry, it make them laugh. But no sometimes shit. I I don't want everybody to know I'm crying. No, well we know it because we, <laughs> we feel it. Oh, okay. Because we love you. Because you're giving us love now. Like right now, you're loving the room. Of course. I'm pretty sure Kirk's going to let you sleep in his guest bedroom <laughs> from now on. Uh, okay. Or, or while, you try to, while you try to... <laughs> no, I, I'm just saying what's going to make you not homeless. Yeah, no, yeah, right. And it's talking right. about being homeless and where all your money went. Yeah. And then suddenly people are going to listen to your shit as opposed to the Sam Jackson stuff, which I always hear you do. That's yeah. your, that your go-to. Yeah. No, Fuck it. The go-to should be who you really are. Because you got more life experience than probably most people in this room. And what I really want to know is, you know, how many times can you come? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kirk. I was going to call Ten. Back. No, I wanted Ten. to beat you to it. Ten. Vanessa, yes. you got anything for Eddie? Uh, as, soon as, uh, as soon as Eddie walked on stage, Vanessa started clutching her purse as hard <laughs> as she could. Uh, I get that all the time. No, that's, that's not true. Well, no, like, I, oh, I found you very, like, like, there was the initial thing of, like, oh, he looks like every person on the bus. But then you, wa like, you walked <laughs> up here. And, um, yeah, like, I just find you likable and charismatic, and you were fun to watch. And, like, I, I've never seen, you know, you, so I hadn't seen the Samuel Jackson stuff, and I thought it was interesting. I just think there's something, like, more colorful of, like, yeah, like, like if Samuel left, you know, Samuel Jackson, like, whatever, you know. Could come twice. Could come twice. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. It's like we're on the same page, I feel like. Um, Get a room. Yeah, I Get think there's definitely something there, but I think what he was saying about, like, yeah, a lot of us don't have that perspective, and if there's, like, a colorful way to kind of tell your story, um, you know, and I think, like, you s just watching you, I know you have the ability to make, to make it funny, and I just think, like he said, there's truth in comedy, and do that, okay. but I, I like you. Keeping with the theme of this uh, week's uh, episode, um, have you ever been to therapy at all? Yeah, I was uh, when I was 17. My father took us because he had just took came us. Who did he take? The family. The he whole family. How many people? Uh, five. Five family members. He took the whole group to we therapy. Went to group therapy yeah. How was that? I lived in a war zone. It was pretty much talking about who's going to shoot at us and stuff. This is like I'm trying to fish for anything funny, and it no, just keeps getting just sadder and sadder. Out. Like this is a, definitely a dramatic, uh, very dramatic. Yes. And then I was breastfed until I was five. Were you uh, really? Uh, yes, I was. Really? Chocolate milk? No, I went door to door. <laughs> Guys. Anyway. Keep, ro keep rocking, man. Right. Just be who you are. There he is. I think you can make anything funny. There he is. Eddie Whitehead Jr., ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he's not on Twitter, right? Eddie, are you on Twitter? One Eddie Whitehead. One Eddie Whitehead on Twitter, everybody. Uh, 
Uh, so tweeted him so All that his money uh, goes to his so cell phone plan. Tweeted him so that uh, so that he can go to the library and check his Twitter and uh, respond back to you. Do a really? joke Not about me. being but about being homeless and on a cell phone, but your roaming charges are just fucking astronomical. <laughs> yeah, that's my gift to you. But do it as you, not Sam Jackson. Right. Uh, okay, we know this guy. Uh, he's been on the show a few times. Put your hands together for Brett Banta, everybody. <laughs> Brett Banta. <laughs> it's fun. Hi, my name is Brett Banta. Have you ever, uh, have you ever been in the middle? Have you ever realized, suddenly realized uh, that you didn't want a job right in the middle of a job interview? So you just had fun with it, like you just went along with it and just winged all the answers. They'd be like, name all of your weaknesses. I'd be like, chin-ups. I can only do three. Where do you see yourself in two years firing you? So I just got a job. I work at Apple, bees. They think I'm a genius. Because I work at the bar, the salad bar. The only, problem, the only time anybody probably has a problem with a mouse is when it's eating from the salad bar. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. I wanted to laugh so hard. It was all pent up so that when you said thank you, good night, I just started laughing. <laughs> you have an amazing delivery. Thank amazing. You. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank Fuck you. yeah, head nods are good for podcasts. Um, Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Apple, the Apple Applebee's thing. Uh, have you done that at another show before? Have no, you... I mean, I've just been trying to at open mics. I was trying to do something right. with... So yes? Yeah. And has it, has it gotten, like, laughs? Yeah, yeah. I got really? Or have you been performing? Uh, just... Random open mics. I mean, I haven't done it on a show or anything. Right. So. Right. Okay. Fuck yeah. I got to tell you, I, I saw you six months ago, and you're a lot better now. You got your hand out of your pocket. You, you seem a lot more at peace. Okay. But the jokes still feel to me like they're jokes. Okay. You can do that same material and just make it conversational so that you're not making it so precious. Okay. You're making everything you say so precious mm. okay instead of just speeding it up okay yeah i'm trying to work on the timing of yeah slowing, and, and slowing and down and don't worry about us you kept looking over at us just we'll throw it out there okay you know so i got i got a new job at uh, apple bees you know apple bees and then you just then just go with it okay as opposed to okay here comes here comes that big punch okay yeah it's, it's never going to be as big as you think Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm having trouble being conversational. Just yeah, but that's why you're, we're all have trouble being something. It, it made it feel lateral as opposed to building because you, it felt like you would reset before each one and go, you know, genius bar. like. Okay. So I think it's, like you were saying, just the, kind of the pacing would help. Yeah, okay. she's right. You don't want it to be staccata. You just, you okay. know. I see your wheels turning over there, Pat. What do you got for Brett Banta? I mean, well, you're, okay. <laughs> when... There, you're, when you were delivering, it felt like there was an angry mob charging at you. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, like your eyes, your eyes kept darting over and around. And I think, you know, I mean, there's this is a general thing when people get anxious and nervous because we're so attuned, even though, though we don't know it as human beings, to other people's energies. It's just like your fucking energy is just, it's just. Is not is, is is sort of is sort of seems not re definitely not relaxed, but also also just a, like a little like just puts the audience like in a place where it's tough for them to laugh. Okay. And then there's a roast joke that I would say here. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about this shirt. Are you are you minute. nervous? Are are you nervous? Um, yeah, I mean the the last half of that joke I just tried, um, so I was kind of. Uh, winging that on what was the, the first part. thing you talked about? Uh, like, have you ever have you ever been in a in a job job right. like realize right. you're in a job right. interview and right. you didn't want the right. job? No, I remember now. Uh, so see, but that's how you should do it. The way you just explained it is how you should okay. just talk. 
Okay. So you guys ever been in a job interview and, you know, ended up blowing someone? I mean, just. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's hard to, I'm trying to, uh, open mics, trying to be more conversational. Well, good, but, but that's I, what we're telling you. You're yeah. on the right track. I mean, okay. we're here to tell you that you're asking yourself the right questions. You just got to work a little harder at it. Just practice okay. talking. Like okay. when you're alone, you should just practice talking. Read a book out loud. Okay. Do you have another job? Uh, no, I mean, I'm. Have you I'm been going on job answer. interviews? Yeah. And where have you been interviewing at? Like, what types of jobs are you looking for? Uh, just, I mean, design jobs, but I haven't really like been getting in, it. What kind of design? Uh, like web design, like uh, skateboard graphics, just anything that's kind of. Skateboard graphics. Yeah, yeah. talk about that. That's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's. I mean, are you a skateboarder? Uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't, been, I haven't skated in a while, but. How old are you? 42. 42. Yeah, so. And you make skateboard <laughs> graphics. Uh, I haven't in a while. I mean, it's it's been a little while, but yeah, that's what I I did uh, a couple years ago. See, but so. you're more interesting now than you were doing your jokes. Okay. Do you feel now, like do you know what that means? He's, you yeah. still it means still just you got to be this guy telling your jokes. Okay. You yeah, still feel just... like you're on the defensive from being attacked, though. Because he is, because like he is being attacked. Like there's a mob. I mean, but there, it's like there's an angry mob with okay. pitchforks who's like, if we see a motherfucker in a checkered button up, we are yeah. gonna get him. Yeah. And you, do you know? Do you know? Like, uh, do you when you when you interact socially, do you have that look in your eyes? Uh, and I, I mean, it's, it's sometimes it just depends. I think just uh, not being up in a while here. Right. I'll try to figure out. Okay, what am I gonna? What what jokes am I gonna do and Kind of being uh, more prepared. You're on the so. right track. You're 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 doing I'm, better than yeah. I used to. Last time I saw you, you scared me. I called yeah. people. I think just like trying to look look out and like look and make eye contact. That's one of the things I was trying was look at, look at everybody. But yeah, it's I think everything. The is most just, the most important thing in comedy is you talk with the room, not at it. Right. Okay. So just talk, just talk to people, yeah. and see who's listening. Okay. No one wants to be talked at. Let's, We're talked at all day at work. Yeah. Let's uh, let's talk about this shirt for a second. Uh, yeah, I, knew, I knew I was coming up so, when you asked about Brent. So like, w w where did you get a shirt like that? Where do you buy that at? Um, I I didn't get it at Cracker Barrel, but I got it at kind of the next best thing. Um, I w I went to Austin uh, Thanksgiving. I got it at Academy, like a hunting store. I gotta tell you, I like it. Thank you. I like that. Wait, I want to hear more about it before. I, I just think it is. Uh, tell me where you got this shirt. It's at a store called Academy, and I think me being a recovering alcoholic, it's easy to like. You can just take it off. Easy. Oh, oh, I see. Because as Basically. a recovering alcoholic, you want to be able to it's get your easy, shirt it's off quick. Easy to, it's easy to put it on and take it off and. I feel like Academy is a sporting. Well, I'm from Texas, so I've been oh, no. to an Academy in Austin, mm -hmm. and it's like a sporting goods store. And I feel like the function of that is like, oh, I'm drunk and I'm going to fight somebody, so you need to be able to rip <laughs> that, so you don't mess up your fancy shirt. Right. Yeah. It's very interesting. Very interesting. Why? Why? If you're drunk, okay. If you're recovering alcoholic, why do you need a shirt with snap buttons? Great question. I just, I just, it just reminds. It is, it's the closest I can get to when I used to drink. So I, it was like an emotional So you, when you it. used to drink, did you used you to? You just rip a shirt off? Yeah, I, just, I would go crazy, and that's when I would. People were charging me, and I was drunk. Then I would. Take that's what it Maybe you wow. should start drinking again. It might yeah. help your car. I, I, I should probably should. A, that'd be a hell of a reality show. I want to I, I want to lock you into a room strapped with cameras. And give you and a shirt with a zipper. No, just give you. <laughs> Look, I can't get cool. it off. Do they know I'm drunk? <laughs> But I just, oh, I, God. I'd put you in layers, man, just seven different layers of clothes and just watch you I'd put you at Applebee's. Shots of whiskey, That's... ripping everything off slowly. And then uh, at Swipe the end, slowly. Pat Reagan uh, <laughs> Pat Reagan comes twice, and we bring it all back around again. It's a very ugly shirt. You're on track, man. Okay. Put your hands together for cool. Brett Bannon. Thank you, guys. Better. Roasting shirts today, Brian. I like your fashion advice. Uh... It's not really fashion. It's a bunch of ugly shirts tonight. What what makes a good shirt for you? Because you have an really? interesting style of your own. Because you usually have like letters like Laverne and Shirley on you. Have, like oh, a Laverne and a, La a Laverne and Shirley reference just killed in this room. Which when not liking an audience before is one thing, but to hear a Laverne and Shirley reference really decimate.
really tuned up my level of hatred of this specific crowd tonight. Dude, I, li I, mean, I like a two-tone hoodie. To, I've never seen a two-tone hoodie. To know that that's the quality of room that I've drawn here tonight, just to wear the the thing that really broke everybody wide open was a Laverne and Shirley lettered shirt reference. <laughs> Makes me really proud. I'm really happy that there's still a lot of time left in this show. Um, Pat, you really yeah. laughed hard at that. You a Laverne and Shirley fan? No, I just... I, well, now I'm laughing because you're deflecting <laughs> Brian's question. What, what, what was there a question? Yeah, do you have like a fat, like what is your fashion stuff? Because I mean, like you what do the wear. What is wrong with the normal shirts? Yeah. That these guys yeah. Are guys, were you I, molested by a lumberjack or what? <laughs> <laughs> that just worked? How is this working? How is this working? What Brian, I've known you five years. That's the funniest thing yeah. you've said. <laughs> yeah. And the Laverne and Shirley thing's the second funniest thing. You're really, you're hit, I'll bring this is the your biggest night. hits. You gotta, re, you gotta send this out as your tape. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking shirt, guys. We're talking shirt. Shirts and therapy have become, uh... Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. How come you didn't ask Sam Jackson where he got that shirt? The funny thing was, is what I was going to say was, is it's crazy that uh, Eddie Whitehead Jr. was the best dressed guy up here tonight, and he's the only one that sleeps on fucking newspapers. Uh, <laughs> Laverne and Shirley newspapers. Solid it's, a, punch it's a tough room, man. No, it's not. <laughs> Put your hands together for your next comedian. You always know it's good when they go by just one letter uh, for their last name. Put your hands together for Chris D., everybody. Let's see what happens here. Hello. Uh, have you guys ever heard of 811? Okay, nobody? Great. Uh, 811, a thing I just heard about, it's called Dig Safe. Yeah, it's a number you want to call if you're doing any digging so you don't hit pipes and power lines, stuff like that. I thought that was a pretty good idea. But then I was thinking, isn't that way too close to 911? Like, you know what I'm talking about? What if you were in a serious emergency? Like, somebody's in your house, they're coming after you. You have no time, you're running away, you reach for the phone, accidentally hit 811. So I had to give them a call. And I was like, Help! Help! He's here! He's in my house! He's trying to kill me! And they were like, Oh, you're looking for 911, uh, this is 811. I was like, oh, no! Wow. You want to finish is that, it? Is that my so time? More, that was a minute, but keep going. If uh, all more. right. No, it really doesn't matter, I guess. <laughs> Do you really want me to? I will keep going. Is there more to it? Oh, there's, w there's a lot more to it. Did I thought it was a minute joke. I guess it was longer than what keep I Keep going. Just keep going. I want to hear more. So you're on the phone, you, it's 811, you expected 911, it'll work. I'm dying to see what happens. Yeah. Right? Uh, this is so weird now. Um, looking for 911. Oh, yeah, and then I had a fake gunshot go off and just hung up. Oh, there it is. We yeah, knew that was going to happen. Yeah. Uh, okay. And so there, I, there wasn't as much yeah, more then, to it. And then I called back five minutes later from the same phone line. And I said, yeah, I need to dig a hole. And then you accidentally oh, caused a big punchline. Like this whole... Maybe you were right when you said it's this whole not worth set up. Oh, no, it's absolutely not worth finishing. Hey, you could it actually, actually works as a great joke, typically, but this it seemed like environment... The, it seemed like the setup was really long. Work. It's a long setup. I guess for just a minute, it wouldn't work. I've never done this before. Where are you from? I'm from Boston. And you do stand up there? Yeah. For how long? I've been doing it for five years oh cool yeah That's yeah fun. you're you're comfy you, yeah. you just oh yeah i'm comfy i'm just not comfortable with this yeah like, i'll right. tell you that i'll straight up tell you that right, right. now so when you signed this up this is for like it. it's very judgy i just didn't know what it was oh what i want to sign up for now it. when I you mean, say I, it's very judgy what do you mean by that i mean there's five very experienced comics on the stage with you while you're trying to deliver a one minute joke it's very but difficult. do you think we judge anybody i don't know 
Probably. Yeah, yes, that's your job. Do, so, yes. No, it's not. <laughs> not. Everybody's it's not your job shirt is to. That helps. Yeah, we're just, just going to oh, talk about your shirt. We, we, okay. You want to talk about per, that? No, but personally, it's from Greece. personally, I haven't judged anyone. Okay. So, when you say we're all judgy, you got to apologize for that. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. Because you were lashing out because you had some trouble for a minute. Oh, f yeah. Yeah. So. Instead of just saying, you know, it was uncomfortable, you don't have to say it's our fault. Okay. I like your shirt. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Brian's only saying that because uh, he's hoping that you'll hook him up with free Chipotle after this because that's obviously a ch Chipotle. Chipotle? It's, it's not? That's from Greece. Is that a sticker? It's, it's from Greece. Do you know the difference between Mexican and Greece? <laughs> I'll hook you up what with free Chipotle that? anyway if you want it. I'll buy it for you. Do you, do, you have a, <laughs> do you have a quick joke that takes 15, 20 seconds? A 20-second joke? Yeah. Do you... Oh, shit. Uh, I guess. Let, what do you mean you guess? you got to believe in what you're selling. I'm a, I'm a storyteller. I mean, I... Yeah. Well, then you need more than a minute. This, I do. This I might need more than a minute. This might not be your venue. It's not. When you signed up, they t did they tell you it was a minute? Did you just do you just sign up for random things all the time? Like do you just yeah. put you put your name in random? Like why raffles? not? Why not just get an experience that you've never had before, no matter what it be? But did they tell you it was a minute? Did you mm. read the thing that you signed up for? No. You just well, put your I knew name on it was a minute, but I honestly doing that joke like in my but mind. But you've seen, but I'll, but I'll just, just say this, and I, I don't want you to think that in any way I'm judging you. Yeah. <laughs> I already think that, but, but go you, ahead. But, <laughs> that's but, a, but that's something you need to work through. But, I, oh, no, it is. But uh, there are seven or eight people that have all done a minute. And yeah. you, you've been here watching people do a minute. So you knew that it was a minute. Right. So that was the only problem. You did a joke that was a four-minute a a four, a yeah. four joke. Yeah, that's the problem. That was so, my bad. That was my bad there. Okay. As yeah. long as you cop to it. I can, I can admit it, and I feel like I've grown tremendously Jesus. from this experience. Like, I this think is, you have. This is the best. And we just nudge in the right direction. No, we, yeah. We don't judge anyone. I will. No, I don't that. judge And I will follow ever. you home tonight until you fucking c tell me that you're not being judged. I would love... I would love it if you followed me home tonight. Oh, I'm, not done. Like, we could, I'm not done with you. I have so much free time that my mission in life yeah. is to get you to I, know that we don't judge. I just... Yeah. You just That'd told Kirk great. that uh, you would love it if he followed you home. Yeah. yeah what does that mean? You want to fuck Kirk? Sh oh, oh, that's exactly what Kirk it means. Kirk Fox yeah. meets Chris Bear. Is that nothing what's happening here? There's nothing wrong with that. Here? Just, just wrong with nice that. to be wanted. Can I just be oh honest? Yeah. I love it. I love your it style. You're from Boston, great. huh? Yeah. And by your build, I'm guessing you were nowhere near that marathon that happened uh, <laughs> a few years ago, right? You were safe, right? You were distant from that. Yeah. Now, Tony, he ju he's judgy. I'm yeah, not. right. Yeah, that just happened. That I could see. <laughs> that happened because you tried to tell me that you didn't know what you were signing up for, but then you <laughs> later admitted that you knew that it was a minute. You got punished. Sure. With a fat do, joke. Do you like to be punished? Oh, I love it, and that's <laughs> like if Kirk was into it. Would you I mean, rather <laughs> Would you rather follow Tony home or Kirk? Would I? Uh, no, no, no. He's following me. Oh. Like, there's a complete... I'm Which not, one would you ra rather have? you have a trailer hitch on your car? I want to be... Because <laughs> that's the only way I can Yes, I do. Like, home. I want to be chased. You know what I mean? I wouldn't I wouldn't chase somebody. He, he wants to follow what me. What if you followed Kirk, and then Tony followed you, and you're in the middle, and... Oh, then, no, that... I'd be into that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I like Jesus that. Christ, what are you pimping <laughs> us like out, Brian? What the <laughs> fuck's going on over here? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, come twice. Jesus yeah. Christ. Pat, I see. You know what's funny is when I'm fucking you, you can dial 811. <laughs> <laughs> and tell them you're digging it. As long as you dig, <laughs> dig safely. Fuck yeah. Burying some cable deep Your in this guy. Your safe word will be shovel. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, I love it. Pat Reagan's wheels are turning over there. What you, what's yeah. going on? I just got a tag for you, Chris. What if you accidentally dial 311? It's like, amber is the color of your energy. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. So, that's just tremendous, man. Like nineties three one one reference. That's oh, yeah. awesome. And, and, it, and that's it awesome, dude. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. Okay, so so uh, it feels like okay, so you came in a little a little bit defensive because you've been doing it five years, so you were a little experienced, and then you you come into what you perceive as a hostile room. But I think your issue is what happened, you went into an act out. You went into the why what was it? Why or yeah. something about why or what and 
when there was a flash right before you went into it where you like second guessed yourself, where you right. didn't fucking leap in with full confidence. Yeah, yeah, because I me- I messed it up. Yeah, I messed up the setup. Like I messed up the whole thing from the beginning. Like just wasn't good. I should have left. With and the like, and it was like a point, sixty so. seconds that just wasn't good for me. But what I love is talking about it for five minutes afterwards. Like that's tremendous. See, even that was defensive. Okay. You know, <laughs> you know what's great is you don't have to talk about it anymore. Oh, that's great. You can go. So I'm done. Perfect. There you go, everybody. Thank you. Chris D. He's on Twitter at Chris OBCT. Fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. We're Josh is periscoping from the back of the room. Wow. Weird. Periscoping the back of a live podcast. Really, really interesting, yeah. Josh. Really we're, crossing we're, the streams back there, yeah. Ghostbusters style. Yeah. Uh, Josh, I'm going to have a crown and coke. You guys want drinks? What are you, what are you guys drinking? Anybody want to drink? Anybody in the audience want to drink? I'm just kidding. I'm not buying you fuckers drinks. Uh, Pat, what are, you, what are you drinking? Whiskey ginger. You want a beer, Kirk? Anybody? Yeah, no pressure. No pressure, guys. I'll have a beer. I need a drink. Can I do a rum and coke, please? Rum and coke, crown and coke, beer, beer, Who just beer? Yeah, girl, no. rum and okay. coke. Okay. Fuck yeah. The... Okay, I was like, Jesus, is listen that, to that guy's that voice. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll take a crown of coke. Uh, and I double come. What are you, fucking home improvement? Uh, 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 I'm just a man watching a show. Young Batman. Okay. Okay, put your hands together for Alice. Okay, she changed her name after writing it down. Allie Makovsky yeah. was once Allison. She said she got rid of the son. Oh, right shit. Here. You know what that means, Pat? She just got blacklisted. <laughs> Ooh, I like that one. Blow the speakers. Fuck yeah. Okay. Ooh, another one letter, uh, last name, initial. Put your hands together for Arturo H. Fuck yeah, here he comes. Arturo H, ladies and gentlemen. It's still happening. How's it going, everybody? So I decided to grow up this morning and change my cell phone plan to unlimited data for once. I decided that, you know, it was the same as keeping open the tab or not counting the amount of times I jacked off today. Um, uh, but yeah, man, I thought I was saving money, you know, five gigs is enough, you know, I don't use my phone much, but come to find out, I'm lonely as fuck, you know, and AT&T seems to want to remind me about that at the most inappropriate of times. Like today, I went to the bathroom to take a shit, you know, took my phone with me, started seeing some videos and decided to do some cardio, you know, you know, just pump the blood a little bit, you know. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, AT&T hits me with this message talking about 100% of your data usage is spent and we're charging you an extra $10 for one gigabyte of data for the rest of the month. Now listen, if you're sitting on your toilet with your dick in your hand, contemplating on whether to bust a nut, uh, keep going, on whether to bust a nut or save $10, then something's wrong with you. (laughs) Thank you. Fuck yeah, Arturo. Hell yeah. I like your style, man. How long have you been doing stand-up? This is my first time. Wow, look at that. We did it again. You heard it. You know what you know what the elephant in seals means. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Arturo. That's amazing. That's so fun. Uh, so you want to be the jack off comedian like all of your stuff uh, no not at all it's just right. that's something that happened this morning of, so of course <laughs> yeah you know so fuck it i'll talk heck about yeah. it you know heck yeah Hell did yeah. you jack off and then go today's the day i do comedy uh that yeah actually yeah, yeah. Came i into just your figured i and was like this is it this yeah, is yeah. Goal i figured i needed to change a pace you know that's what i'm thinking about today so that's right that's why i'm here we, right. what, what felt better jacking off or doing stand-up uh doing stand-up I cool. yeah fun. you yeah. can't nice. beat that Oh, yeah. Is it, I'm here to have fun, so you. Oh, wow. <laughs> you were you were you were uh, taking a shit while you were jacking off. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck well, yeah. Is that for the anal play? What? Because I can't get into jacking uh, off. Like, like you I need said, to feel like the wa- ass stuff I at the same time. Or? I was watching some videos, you know, and, and you know the mood struck. So. You're, so you were taking <laughs> a shit, watching a video, and jacking off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. You do more in a day than I do in a week. <laughs> <laughs> and writing a bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I wrote it on my way here, so. 
Wow, that's amazing. Did you jerk off on the way here, too? Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> Well, let me ask you this: Like, when you're, do you often jerk off on the toilet? Is that a normal thing that you do? Uh, no, it just like, like wow. I said, yeah. that's amazing. So you're blowing loads while taking a shit, and by the looks of it, those are the only two ways that you lose any weight ever. <laughs> uh, blowing loads while dropping. Loads. You're like a, you're like a very, very young fluffy. Hell Has anybody yeah. told you that? You're like Baber yeah, yeah, Babriel yeah. Inglacius. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I don't like this crowd. I don't like me. I don't like you. This is the worst. This is my worst performance in 102 episodes. I hate. I hate tonight. This is the last time I'm, we're ever taking a week off. By the way, do you like that shirt? For your first time on stage, I, I thought I thought you were fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. you know? I mean, it was interesting. I I was paying attention. Yeah, definitely. Arturo. I would just say you're hold, you're holding the mic a long distance from your face. Just imagine that the mic is like a big ice cream cone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there goes the mic. Well, the mic's gone now. Uh, <laughs> you podcast listeners, we just lost a mic. Uh, Arturo, that is so fun. I love I love it when it's people's first times. What have you been doing with your life up until this point? Like, how do you make? How old are you? Twenty two. Wow, I love it. That's how old I was when I started. Yeah. Just think, well, eight years from now, you could be bombing on your own show, uh, <laughs> like, I've been, like I've been doing tonight. Really, just I'm, I really haven't hosted it exceptionally well. I, I, I really haven't gotten any good jokes on. Normally, it's like home run derby, but it's just not happening. So, how do you you think that you could? Uh, you think that this is something that you want to do for a long time um, after doing it for the first time? Well, yeah, I mean, it's something I really enjoy, so... Right. Oh, yeah. Right. I, I, I mean, you've only done it once, so yeah, exactly. you don't really have a lot to draw on. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. Uh, no, but I like it because, like, I listen to the show a lot, and I listen to, like, JRE, and I'm a fan of Red Band through that. And cool. And found this year, so... Well, it's your first time, but... You're yeah, a fan yeah. of Red Bands? you got to yeah, keep yeah. some things to oh, yourself. Yeah. No, well, that <laughs> links me to Death Squad, you know? That leads me here. It's a, it's amazing for a first time comedian how much material you have. And oh, again, yeah. I'm just talking about that shirt. Um, <laughs> there we go with the Tony. What do you think about that? You don't like it? It looks like it could, like no. if you wear 3D glasses, it would look. <laughs> what do you do when you're not jacking off or shitting? Uh, I have a full time job in Anaheim, and As, I go to, at what? Doing what? Uh, it's like warehouse work and assembly line. We uh, fabricate circuit boards. Nice. And then um, I go to school in San Bernardino, also full time for graphic design. Just start writing about it, man. Hell, Hell yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I'm pretty busy, so this is my only day off. So you, I'm you, here of course you're busy. Really... You got to shit and jack <laughs> off at the same time. Yeah, yeah busy a, schedule. That's busy amazing. Uh, you, 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 what else? What else is something interesting about you, Arturo? Um, that's it. I like writing lyrics too. Like for writing music, what? Like lyrics. Oh really? Like yeah. Do you play any instruments? No, not at all. Not at all, yeah. huh? Do you, you also write lyrics I while just you like jerk writing. off? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it really is like your cr most creative time, I think. Is it, is it just the jerking off, or is the shitting jerking off really like when you shine? Actually, that's what leads me into writing. You know. So okay. It's, yeah, it's where I find my time alone. Now, let me ask you this. <laughs> I'm non-sexually, like, fascinated by your process, oh, by yeah. the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a question that I have which feels like it's, it's been influenced from years of hanging out with Brian Redband. But, I, but now I want to know the answer to it because I'm thinking. So you're shitting, right? And then, <laughs> so, like, do you, do you start the actual shit? Like, does, does anything come out of you before you start jerking off? Like, what's the order of events as far as... As far as shit, jerk That's off. That's a great question. Did you go into the bathroom to shit or to yeah, masturbate? No. To shit. Yeah. You went into right. shit. And then all of a sudden you're sitting there so and, you, and you look it. down and you saw your dick and you're just like, oh, yeah, you're about to get it right yeah. now. Right when you least expect it. Actually, like, due to my size, like, I usually have to cut my balls before I sit down, you know, because I don't need that type of pain in my oh. life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wait That's a second. Like, no, now I, want, now I want to know more. I, I, I have no idea about cupping you balls You sit before. on your balls every time yeah. you sit? Oh, most, sometimes, yeah. I, I've sat on my balls a few times. Wow. Yeah. Jeez, oh, man. So, like, when I sit down, I was like, fuck I've it, never sat know? on my balls. I feel like <laughs> I'm missing out on How this. do you sit on the balls on a toilet seat, though? I mean, there's, like, a big opening there. Of all the things that you could sit on where you wouldn't sit on your balls, I'd imagine that a toilet's probably yeah, well, one I, of them. I but guess, I, guess I, when guess you're, I guess when problem, you're looking right? at your phone, yeah. as, you sit, you really yeah, exactly. as you sit, you don't know really where you're sitting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a fucking crapshoot. Fuck yeah. So let me, so <laughs> I'm going to go back to my, uh, I'm going to go back to my <laughs> filthy crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go back to my uh, filthy question. So let me ask you this: Like, do you did you finish 
Uh, did you orgasm while on the toilet? Well, no, because I got the message of 100% of your data and has been used. You're right. So the I real question, to... what, what did you wipe first, your ass or your dick? <laughs> yeah, my ass. Good for you, man. I, yeah. I don't like it. I can never come on the toilet. It just doesn't work. And then I have a boner and I have to piss while shitting. And then yeah, my, my exactly. boner won't fit in the toilet hole. And then If you put a little mini fridge next to the toilet, you'd never have Golden. to leave. Golden. Fuck, dude. That's it. If I was 22, I'd just start differently. <laughs> now, uh, what do other members of your family do? you have any brothers or sisters? Uh, no, just my mom. Yeah, I live with my mom. You're, 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 you're an only child? Yeah, only child. Well, what I, nationality I, are you? Mexican. Oh, oh my mine. God, everybody. Undercover uh, cop here. Uh, Undercover cop. Somebody, uh, <laughs> somebody make a wish or... Uh, <laughs> Your mom's, anybody... lying, your mom's lying to you. Isn't there supposed to be like the end of a rainbow somewhere here right yeah. now or something? <laughs> a, a Mexican single child. Yeah. Holy wow. shit. I, see, I mean, yeah. wow, your mother, your mother mean, obviously I... cooks dinner for five kids. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Only took 40 minutes. <laughs> when he didn't say he was a landscaper, I knew that there was going to be something else that right. slip in about us <laughs> right. Mexicans. Well, he's, he, he's definitely not a landscaper. He definitely goes... <laughs> <laughs> By his look, you could tell that he's not seeing any actu- greens are whatsoever. Are you exercising? Are you, are you working? <laughs> not, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> you do exercise? Are, are you going to start? I mean, Probably, are you yeah. aware that you're a little oh, overweight? Yeah, yeah, of course, oh. yeah. So Look, maybe one day we don't jerk off and just go for a walk. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we're just just as a friend, right? You know? yeah. But 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 health wise, but yeah. don't just start exercising. In, you know. <laughs> but when you fill in your time from jerking off with taking a walk, don't accidentally shit your pants while you're doing it <laughs> out of habit. Or jerk or off it. while you're walking. Right. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, that's, that, that's a good little thing. Like, you, you jerk off when you're shitting so much that now every time you come, you shit also because you're so used to it. That's like a g- good little turn of events <laughs> to that. Super Look at this. You're changing moment. people's lives, you Arturo. I'm pretty you have sure. a girlfriend? <laughs> no. Yeah. I, like your, I like your Elvis smirk, by the way. You have, like, oh, yeah, that yeah, Elvis yeah. smirk yeah. thing going on there. And Art- you got the Elvis body toward the end, so that's oh, good. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and you're probably also gonna die on a shitter, obviously. So there you go. That's a fuck you to everybody that wasn't with me all night. Go fuck yourselves. You'll you'll be com- worst audience out of 102 episodes. You'll be you'll be coming and going at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Arturo, I fucking love you. Yeah. I'd shake your hand, but get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Arturo, you are unbelievable. I really, 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 really hope you come back next week. Thank you so much. Arturo H., everybody. That guy's cool as fuck. 22. He's got a thing. He's got a look. It's going a through thing data. Going, going through data. Hey, hey, better call Saul. Will you quiet down, you wacky son of a bitch? What's this guy's story? We, we, we finally get Jerry and Laney quiet for the first time in uh, months, and this doofball over here. I bet you have a fancy car. What kind of car do you drive? Oh, he's mad at me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, funny man, I see. Put your hands together for your next comedian, Keenan Lewis. What's that? I'm Jewish. Did you know, thank you, we invented the circumcision? We're like the Thomas Edison's of cutting part of your dick off. I recently found out why we originally did that though. Um, We did it as an offering to God. We would circumcise our children as an offering to God. Do you know God loves baby foreskins? Did you know that? Ooh. (laughs) Hey. yeah, fuck. That's fucked up. Uh, I used to cut when I was younger, and I like got older, and I realized I wasn't just hurting myself. I was hurting everyone in line behind me. I think all this awful stuff stems from the fact that my mom didn't start breastfeeding me until I was 13. Ah, <laughs> yeah, that's 58 seconds. Okay, Keenan. Hey, yo. 
Whoa. That's it. Whoa, looks like Pat Reagan Jesus hates you. Right. Jeez, wow. My goodness. Why are you attacking Keenan? Yeah, well. Keenan, all right, Keenan. Uh, all right, forget it. Keenan, uh, how long have you been doing stand-up? Like a month. Where are you from? Phoenix, Arizona. Have you been doing it a month here, or did you start in Phoenix? I started here. Wow. You live here now? Yeah. Originally from Phoenix? Uh, yeah. How long have you lived in L.A.? Like two and a half years. Two and a half years. And you were out here for two and a half years, and all of a sudden you're like, now I'm going to start stand-up. Pretty much. What were you doing the two and a half years before that? Um, I work in film. I worked at a camera shop for a while. and do photography. Oh, nice. How'd you do that? <laughs> oh, how'd you know that, Pat? I can just, I can just smell it on him. <laughs> oh, you hate this guy. <laughs> no, no. I listened to all your songs and laughed along and tapped my feet. Oh, you do me like shit. this. Damn, look at you. What an asshole. Guys, what do we what do you got for Keenan? We gotta fly through this part real quick. I mean you've 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 been doing it a month. Mm -hmm. Like I say, you gotta just slow it down a little. A you know, little you're bouncing bit. around the stage, so we're we're losing you. Okay. And just you just tell these jokes and, and believe in them. And like I said at the beginning, if if something doesn't work, they only know it doesn't work if you say, oh, fuck, that didn't work. So just keep going. They don't know when it's supposed to be funny. You might get a laugh at 60 seconds, and then they'll think, fuck, that was just a long setup. <laughs> so just slow it down. You're a smart guy. Right? Just write some better jokes. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. That's all. Thank I'd you. say that, and I feel like especially with, like, one minute time coming out and be like, hey, did you guys know, did you guys know, and, like, you know, you're not getting a lot of like reception then it just feels like you're doing a questionnaire that nobody's responding to um so maybe just come out with like more confidence and be like so i mean we all know how like this mm. and then like you said you know just kind of make the jokes punchier but i think you have a good energy just definitely slow it down sure. keenan you have a black name i do i also do black yeah, yeah. keenan lewis, lewis black name yeah yeah you. actually you have two black first names uh <laughs> keenan and lewis probably would qualify what ha what happened there well, Did your... well lewis is my middle name but my last name's like a long polish last name so i just it's what just is too it? much. kusnersik Ooh, yeah. yikes keenan kusnersik yeah wow. that's why your parents hated you at keenan now that i see <laughs> now that i see the last name they matched i kind of like with. that last name i'd go with it with with the polish one yeah. No oh, one's. No one can. Keenan, we got to move to the next part okay, of the show. Yeah, I, I accidentally Thank pulled your name out of a bucket instead of moving to the final part of the show. So there you Thank go, Keenan Lewis, everybody. There he goes. Keenan Kusnersik, ladies and gentlemen. Keenan Kusnersik. There he goes. Uh, this is the part of the show where we have two regulars that uh, have been doing a new 60 seconds every single week since the show started, and they always write and perform a brand new minute. And uh, this week's no different. Put your hands together for your first regular doing 60 seconds of brand new material. Uh, drop out of the Florida Florida Un University of Florida everybody and uh, she did stand up for her very first time on this stage and has been writing and performing a new minute for a year and a half period together for Kimberly Congdon <laughs> uh, I recently got a membership at 24-hour fitness there's two of them in Hollywood there's a gay gym and there's a straight gym uh, and I'm working out at the gay gym until I'm sexy enough for the straight gym. <laughs> uh, I like working out with the lesbians. Uh, my fingers are getting really strong. I, I treat the gym like comedy. Um, the other day I was working out in the gay gym and this gay guy looked at my butt and smiled. And I'm like, wow, that's like impressing comics at an open mic. I'm going to kill at the straight gym. That's it. That's great. I love that. That's, a, that's three funny things. I felt like that was real. And, uh, you know, blatantly, I can see that, uh, you know, the stage presence, it's always amazing to me how different, even though a lot of comedians have been doing it longer in five years and three years and this and that, it's, it's interesting how it's pretty much standout how being a regular here, your your jokes have such a greater chance at working because of the way that you command the stage. It's really interesting to me to watch it evolve over a year and a half. And anyway, uh, it's a really, really good joke. It's true to you, and it's a, it's a local reference, but that you can make local references work anywhere. 
Mm-hmm. And it's a good little three banger. I think it's a uh, definitely a good premise and more to work on, guys. I agree. It's it's funny stuff. And Thank you. I've seen you over the years, and you just own your space, and you took a little breath, and you just told your story. You believed in what you were selling, and we laughed enough for you to feel good about yourself. Thank you. Yeah. No, that was exactly like because I think when you first um, when you first said it, did you say like that you go to the gay gym and like so then you can go to the straight gym? Was that yeah, the like I'm gonna work my way up to yeah, the straight. Yeah, so that gym. was like my first instinct was like, oh well, it almost seems like you'd want to flip it because the gay gym is like way judgier. But then like you kind of went to that place towards like so it was like oh I'm just thrilled with that. Yeah, mm-hmm. thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. Brand new minute. You crushed. You did it okay. again. Kimberly Congdon, everybody. Kim Congdon. Follow her on Twitter at Kimberly Congdon. Uh, and you're one other regular that does a brand new 60 seconds every single week. Put your hands together for it. It's Sarah Weinshank, everybody. Here she comes. What's up? Um, went over to my friend's house. I saw a fly swatter on her kitchen counter. I thought that was strange. I asked her, why the fuck is your fly swatter on your kitchen counter? She said, I just pulled it out of the dishwasher. She didn't make it any better. You put your fly swatter in with your dishes, and now just chilling on the counter. How come fly swatters are socially acceptable? They're killing machines. If someone walked into my house and I had a gun on the table, or on the kitchen counter, there'd be questions. Not the fly swatter, because flies really fuck with humans. Flies are the only reason that the insect species has a leg on us. Nothing looks more stupid than someone just standing in their kitchen swatting a fly. <laughs> is, there anything, is there anything more? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. It's a great premise. It really is. The fly swatter is not talked about often enough. I don't think I've ever heard anything about it, and it's right up your alley of taking products and small things, and usually for some reason it's almost always in the kitchen. I feel like you're going to be the first comedian to do an out first hour special just on stuff in a kitchen. Sarah Weinshank, kitchen. stuff in a ki- kitchen. I can picture it. She has killer jokes on like mustard and ketchup and everything in a fridge. So, Sarah, why don't you just take it a little further... Like uh, flies, they only live 24 hours anyway. So if you're out there killing a fly, you're just a fucking killer. Right. Yeah. They're going to be dead in 24 hours. Just chill. Let let them die on their own. You're killing something that's on death row already. Yeah. Yeah, Just let it go. Let nature take its course. They might be dead in an hour. You don't know how long they've been living. Yeah. So just just go at your friend like she's a sociopath. Okay, yeah. I like that. Right. I also want to say, like, why, do, like, what's wrong with your kitchen that you need, like, a fly swatter out all the time? You know, like, mm-hmm. maybe. And then look ask into yourself that. if right. fruit flies are gay. <laughs> right. And killing, and killing somebody, and killing a fly with a fly swatter due to their 24 hours, you know, of. But they only have 24 hours of life left, so. And talk about killing, how most of them die from a concussion. Just, <laughs> just hitting the window enough. <laughs> You know, this oh. audience really needs to wake up. I mean, <laughs> it's too late. It's the end of the episode. That's it. There's Sarah Weinshank, everybody. There she goes. She's on Twitter at Princess Shank. We did it again, guys. Episode Who Gives a Fuck on episode Who Gives a Fuck on truly episode Who Gives a Fuck of Kill Tony. This one might never be released. So congratulations to you, you I'd stream like viewers. Of, I'd like a copy of it. I thought I was You want fantastic. a copy? Well, I thought I'll, it was fantastic. I'll put it in a box of tapes for you. And uh, remember that from earlier, I you fucking idiots? I actually want this because I need a new white noise machine. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Patty Reagan, everybody, is Patty Reagan on Twitter. Kirk Fox is Kirk Fox. Vanessa Ramos is Vanessa Ramos. Catch her on At Midnight, one of the greatest writers in the world. So many great jokes on that Bieber roast. Love working with her. And the great Kirk Fox, Brian Redband and I, May 12th to 13th, San Fran, Sacramento. Kill Tony every Monday at 8. Thank you, live audience. I really like you guys, believe it or not. <laughs>